Hey everyone and welcome to another episode. Today we're going to be working on this little guy Fergus and his sister Buttons, that little one right next to me. And I'm just going to be taking Fergus to the bath first and I'm slowly realizing that Fergus does not want to be picked up. So the second option is to guide him to the bath. Sometimes dogs will just be okay with getting picked up and others are like, I prefer to just walk myself, thanks. So just guiding him up here, he's being a little hesitant. Not all dogs are enthusiastic about the bath as all the other ones. So Fergus is like, I like you, but I'd rather not, but I guess I'll comply. Now Fergus is a really good boy. He is also a Labradoodle, so a Labrador Retriever mixed with a Poodle. And here we go, always putting the cotton balls in the ears to make sure they don't get water in them because that will cause ear infections. Fergus is a doodle and a lot of doodles are really curly. In Fergus's case, he's, he's a curly guy, but I've seen doodles with thicker hair. right down to the skin without me having to put a lot of effort into getting him clean. Sometimes dogs like this do need two baths. A lot of the thicker coated doodles or people who just like to roll their dogs in dirt will need a second bath. But in this case, Fergus comes every three weeks and he's a pretty chill guy. He doesn't get very dirty.
Okay, so since Fergus is here with his sister, I'm going to be bathing his sister while Fergus is sitting in his shampoo for at least 5 to 10 minutes. And I'm just going to put him over to the other side on the other surface just to kind of hang out, putting a towel down so that the water and soap that comes off of him while he's hanging out there doesn't get on the floor. And of course, rinsing out the tub and getting all the soap bubbles out before I put his sister in is ideal. The thing with buttons here is I actually believe this was my first time bathing her. That or I haven't bathed her in a really long time. Gina usually will always do her haircut because she is a special case. And Buttons here usually goes away for the summer and she goes to see another groomer over the summer. Now Gina discovered that the groomer Buttons was going to see over the summer was making her an erotic mess and making the grooming process really tough for us because she would leave for the summer and come back and she'd be a train wreck. And every summer it just got progressively worse until one day she got cut at the other groomer and Gina tried to tell her pet parents before that cut happened that, you know, Buttons is seeming really emotional at the groomer and it's probably a good idea that she just stick with one person. So cut to when Buttons got cut, she started just coming to us her par parent was like okay fine we'll just bring her to you even if we have to come up from where we're staying in the summer that happened and we saw a lot of progress in her now since this is my first time bathing her because we lost our other bather she is new to me and i am new to her so this first bath is going to be a little weird for the both of us and we're just going to have to work with each other here and hopefully over time i can gain her trust So I'm just mixing in her shampoos. She gets the same thing as her brother. She is a also a curly coated dog, but she is a Bichon. So the thing with doing, I guess, difficult or special case dogs like this is that since they've been traumatized, they are going to resist. And it is my job to read her body language and to kind of understand what she's comfortable with and what she's not comfortable with. Also keeping in mind that while grooming dogs it's really emotional for them. It's also tough love because she still has to get clean and I still have to make sure she doesn't smell like caca going out the door and that she can get a proper haircut. So I'm just doing my best to maneuver my way around buttons without hurting her and just, just doing my best to wash her without traumatizing her and to make her feel comfortable. Now, I wasn't sure if she was supposed to be getting her anal glands done. I did try to check and she did kind of whip around and pretend like she was going to bite me. She's not serious by any means necessary. Um, but sometimes dogs will play that game where they'll pretend to bite you, but they actually won't just to kind of scare you away from what you're actually trying to do on them. Because they're smart. Dogs are not stupid by any means necessary. They're like children. And then after this, I'm going to just switch Fergus and Buttons and wash up Fergus while Buttons is sitting in her shampoo and then I believe Gina's going to be blow drying Fergie and then I'm going to be blow drying Buttons.
Okay, so now that we're done bathing buttons, it's obviously going to be time to blow dry her. Now, like in my last video, you saw that I put Sasha the Boston Terrier on the floor dryer with the green and purple dryers down on the floor there. Since Button has curly hair, she is going to have to get blow dried all the way through because the end result that you want when blow drying a dog like this with curly hair is you want the hair to be straight so you can get a good haircut out of it and an even one at that. So Buttons just tested me again there and it scared both Gina and I because it was a very sharp yelp and she's just kind of testing the waters to see if I'll back off or not and unfortunately I'm not backing off but again I'm being very mindful as to how I'm handling her and just kind of trying to make her comfortable while still doing my job. Again tough love guys we still have to do our job but that does not mean we abuse these animals she's doing just fine. If a dog does not get groomed regularly, it can lead to a lot of health issues. And after a while of me blow drying her, she seemed to calm down and she seemed to realize that I'm not gonna hurt her. Okay, beautiful. So I'm just putting my hose back to the way I found it and Buttons is nice and dry and take note of how straight her hair is instead of kinky and curly. This is really going to help with the end result of her haircut. It's going to look nice and even and she's going to feel so soft and fluffy. Now, especially with a dog like this who's been traumatized, I always reward them with treats. Take note of how her tail's up and she's kind of following me to the back room. She seems pretty content and okay with what just happened for the most part. Okay guys, so for this last half of the video, I'm going to be showing you how I brush out Fergus. Fergus is a Labradoodle, like I said before, so he has really curly coat. You can use this brushing tutorial for most coat types. Fergus was smiling at me just now because when you hype him up, he smiles. So let's take a look at this wired haired pointer Griffon. And just take note of how the hair lays and the direction in which the hair grows. This is going to be a general idea of the direction in which you want to brush 
most dogs. I am gonna show you the products that I'm gonna be using, just gathering my tools. So the first product that I'm gonna be showing you is called Ice on Ice Ultra. It's a dematting spray. You always wanna use a detangling or a dematting spray because if you don't, the coat will work against you and it will help prevent damage and it'll make your life easier brushing your dog and your dog will be more comfortable. This is a Chris Christensen brush. It is the best brush on the market because of the long pins, they're flexible, the brush is made ergonomically correct to help you and your dog have a fun and comfortable brushing session. So I like to start with the back legs just because you should have a system in which you brush so you don't miss any spots. I usually like picking up the dog's legs by the joints, so here I'm holding him by the ankle. And I'm brushing in a downward motion here. Usually I'll recommend that the pet parent brush backwards on the foot or up and back just so they don't miss any of the tangles in between the toes. And notice how I'm not using long strokes, kind of like when you just got out the shower, you want to use short strokes to kind of untangle the ends of the hair and make your way down to the root. So small strokes until I get to the root of the hair down to the skin. And keeping in mind that diagram of, or the picture of the Griffon that I showed you. And when it comes to brushing the tail, of course you wanna use some detangling spray. You wanna start by grabbing the meat of the tail because think of it as an extension of their spine. Starting from the ends, making my way down to the root or the meat of the tail. Just because if I'm consistently brushing on the meat of the tail, it's pretty uncomfortable for dogs. A lot of dogs are sensitive about their tails being brushed. Usually you can tell when a dog's been brushed out in that area is the brush stops tugging. So my free hand is always supporting the dog and or holding the skin taut so it doesn't make the dog uncomfortable or pull on skin or coat that I'm not brushing. Armpits are a high friction area because they are rubbing up against the arm or the leg and the body. So in order to get that area, you want to pick the dog's leg up by the ankle or the elbow and brush in a backwards motion because that is more comfortable for them and brushing any other way just kind of doesn't make sense. So there's my hand just kind of supporting his leg and pushing the skin out from under his armpit so I can brush it as well. And when it comes to brushing the chest of the dog, take note of this picture of this German Shepherd. See how on the chest there's all those cowlicks and hairs growing in different directions? So in order to brush those hairs out without making the dog feel uncomfortable, you want to brush sideways brush from the middle of the chest out and then for the back of the front legs which also has cowlicks you want to pick the pick their leg up by the ankle and brush backwards it is as you can see for fergus more comfortable for him and ergonomically correct for the both of us so here i am putting a belly band on fergus i noticed a returning client has arrived so i'm just going to quickly grab their dog and come right back to the table at no point can I not see or hear Fergus from where I'm standing or can I not quickly get to him. So like I mentioned before about brushing the foot is you can brush in a downwards motion and side to side, but I also do recommend for pet parents to brush backwards on the foot just to get the tangles and knots that gets stuck in between the toes. And usually for the front side of the front leg, you wanna brush in a downwards and diagonal motion 
Usually I recommend for pet parents who have puppies to brush side to side on the front legs because there's what's called a growth bone, which is super sensitive for puppies especially. And here is my Greyhound comb. There is a wide tooth side and a fine tooth side. And again, not forcing the comb through in one stroke, but just kind of picking at the hair until I feel like there are no tangles or knots. And then eventually you should be able to get the comb to slide right through the hair. And then picking up the foot and picking it in that upwards motion to make sure you get those tangles in. Now getting behind the ears is key because that is another high friction area. You want to pull the ear forwards to the muzzle and brush towards the muzzle from behind the ears. And don't forget the insides of the ears, same method as brushing the outside. And here I am just trying to get underneath the ears because that is also another area that gets pretty tangly. I'm just holding the ear with my other hand above his head and brushing down and forward. I know it looks like I'm tugging on him guys, and I am technically, but he's doing just fine. If he was in pain, he would definitely let me know. So here I am showing you my Chris Christensen brush. I love this little brush, I forgot what it's called, but I like using it on the face in particular. 
because I feel like it's just enough brush. I feel like the other ones can be a little bit of overkill, especially when we get down to the smaller breeds. And I feel like it just fits their face perfectly as opposed to that rectangular shape. And it is just comfortable for the dog and I. And as far as brushing the chin goes, you can go in a downwards motion towards the chest like I am now. Or you can take the brush from where the neck meets the muzzle from underneath and brush towards yourself. And here I am again with my Greyhound comb, just checking my work to make sure I didn't miss any tangles or knots. The comb is to purely check to see if you missed any tangles. You should not be yanking out tangles with your comb because that will hurt. You need to go back with your slicker brush if you find that you've missed anything. And just using the same technique I used with my slicker brush to comb out the head. Now for this last part, I am going in with the fine tooth side just to double check I didn't miss anything because if I have to stop to take out more tangles while I'm grooming him, it's just going to slow me down. <laughs> 